The death of Eurystheus marked the end of the Perseid dynasty at Mycenae. This event, together with a previous unsuccessful war of the Seven against Thebes, significantly weakened the Mycenaean power and caused widespread uncertainty throughout the mainland Greece. As the throne of Mycenae was claimed by Atreus and Theistes, the two brothers which Eurystheus had left in charge while he was on the campaign, the following years were everything but peaceful. A continuous war that led to the establishment of the House of Atreus, the final ruling dynasty of the great city of Mycenae. Atreus and Theistes were the two twin brothers, sons of King Pelops of Pisa in the region of Elis. Pelops himself was said to have been a son of mythical Tantalos, known for his attempt to trick the gods and sentence to an eternal punishment in the underworld. King Pelops had many children, with four of his daughters married into the royal dynasty in Mycenae. Among his sons were the twin brothers, Atreus and Theistes, who had been sent to Eurystheus' court in Mycenae, apparently exiled by their father after having their half-brother murdered in Olympia. The two brothers soon became trusted advisors of the Mycenaean king, and after Eurystheus declared war on Athens, Atreus and Theistes were left as stewards of the throne while the king was on the campaign together with his sons. The campaign, however, ended in a disaster, as Eurystheus was killed by the Heraclidae together with all five of his sons. Atreus and Theistes therefore declared themselves the joint rulers of the kingdom, a claim that was soon to be heavily contested. As late King Eurystheus and his arch-rival Heracles were related, Heracles' sons and descendants, better known as the Heraclidae, laid a historical claim to the Mycenaean throne. The leader of the Heraclidae, Helos, thus declared the son of Pelops usurpers and marched towards Peloponnese. The two armies met somewhere between the Isthmus of Corinth and Argolis, and the subsequent battle ended in a stalemate. Helos soon learned that defeating an expedition of Eurystheus was nowhere near as difficult as actually marching on Mycenae itself. Helos continued his campaign in the following months but achieved no progress. As his resources began to drain, it became evident that his invasion was doomed to fail. One year after his initial attack, Helos and his brothers finally decided to abandon the campaign and withdrew in defeat. The victorious sons of Pelops now had no challenge to the rule in Mycenae, but as it often happens, a peaceful coexistence of two rulers was not bound to success. One story has it that Atreus found out that his brother Theistes and his wife were lovers, and subsequently plotted a terrible revenge. Before attending the royal feast, Atreus organized a secret conspiracy in which Theistes' three sons were murdered. During the feast, unaware Theistes was served a special meal. 
human flesh of his own children. After this terrible act, Theistes quickly fled the city in order to save his own life from what was coming, but also swore a blood feud against his brother. Atreus was finally declared the sole king of Mycenae, establishing the final Mycenaean dynasty, the Atreids. Atreus was either father of Agamemnon and Menelaus, or their grandfather through his son Pleisthenes, who was killed in the civil war, and either way, it was Atreus who ended up raising the two brothers. Meanwhile, in the north of Aeolis, in a land which would later become a part of Thessaly, the Heraclidae were rebuilding and planning another bit to defeat the Mycenaean king. The local king of the land was Aegemius, a mythological ancestor of the Dorians, who owed a debt to Heracles for previously helping him prevail in a local war. Hylas, Heracles' son, was therefore welcomed as a great ally and was treated like a son by Aegemius, even receiving one-third of the whole land. Upon Aegemius' death, his two sons, Dimas and Pamphilos, decided to join Hylas' cause, and a brand new army was raised for another war against Atreus. The Heraclidean force once again crossed the Isthmus of Corinth, but this time Atreus was ready with the Achaean contingents from all over Peloponnese. As the battle was indecisive yet again, the two sides agreed that the outcome was to be decided by single combat. Hylas himself rose up to fight on the behalf of his army, fully confident that no warrior was good enough to defeat the celebrated son of Heracles. The Mycenaean army went through its ranks with not many feeling confident about fighting Hylas. Ultimately, the Arcadian prince Echemus, the Basileus of Tegea, offered himself as the champion of the defending force, and King Atreus finally selected his warrior. A great battle ensured a single combat to the death between the two champions. Although Helos was a man of great courage and reputation, it was Echemus who rose to the occasion, defeating and killing the leader of the Heraclidae. Having been left with no leader, the Heraclidean force was quickly disbanded and King Atreus claimed yet another victory. Demas and Pamphilus would return to Thessaly, carrying on the legacy of Helos and remaining allied to his successors. The later Dorians would continue to carry this legacy, being historically divided into three clans, named after Helos, Demas, and Pamphilus. In Mycenae, Atreus was now the undisputed ruler, with seemingly no more threats to his throne. However, the blood feud with his brother was not yet over, and Theistes was still alive and hiding in exile. Although deprived of his sons in the most gruesome way, Theistes still had one daughter, Pelopia. In yet another horrific act, Theistes had a child with his own daughter, a son named Aegisthus. Unknown to Atreus, Aegisthus lived a normal life in Mycenae with more than enough time to organize another conspiracy for Theistes, who was both his father and his grandfather. Traditionally dated to sometime around 1218 BCE, another fatal intrigue was organized on the court of Mycenae, and King Atreus was murdered by Aegisthus. The whole plot was quickly revealed, with Theistes quickly marching to Mycenae with his followers and declaring himself the new Achaean king. 
the new ruler of even more fragmented Achaea would finally have his revenge. But peaceful rule was not something that was destined to the sons of Pelops. The successors of Atreus, two brothers Agamemnon and Menelaus, managed to flee the city and found shelter in Sparta. There, they were welcomed by King Tyndareus and started raising their forces, continuing the blood feud and everlasting curse of the Pelopides. Please consider subscribing and sharing the video as this is a one-person production and it greatly helps the visibility of the channel. Special thanks to History with Sai, Nico, Estate Care and Panayotis Yanopoulos for their continuous support. If you wish to become a Patreon member, feel free to click the link in the video description. This was Wanex TV and we'll see you again soon.